，留学天下，改变从这里开始。我是肖燕，欢迎您如约走进今天的节目。不知道大家最近是不是和我一样有这么一种感受：身边的外国人啊，越来越多了。比如说上个月吧，我连着参加了几场婚礼，可巧了，新娘新郎都是一个中国人，一个外国人。就连我们栏目的制片人家里，听说都住着一个从哥斯达黎加来的海外交流生。我在互联网上用“在中国的外国人”做关键词搜索了一下，二零零六年有四千四百万外国人出入中国，比二零零一年增加了近百分之九十八。北京登记居留的外国人有七万多人，上海就更多了，非官方数字统计起码超过了三十万。那究竟是什么原因将这些外国人吸引到了中国，甚至使他们定居于此呢？今天的节目里，我们就来听听加拿大 Mount Knowledge 公司的主席欧文先生讲一讲他的中国情节。对很多外国人来说，中国是一个奇妙的地方。有时它像是南国温婉动人的少女，有时它又像北方豪爽霸气的汉子，有时它是个饱经风霜的老人，而有时它又是淘气活泼的孩童。无数到中国来的外国人都会被他千变万化的性格深深陶醉。欧文第一次到中国是一九七六年的世界环球旅行。如果说那一次与中国的邂逅，他仅仅算是一个过客的话，那么一九九六年攀登珠穆朗玛峰，则可以算是他与中国结缘的正式旅程。It took me、uh, five years to actually、uh, climb Mount Everest, and in that time, I had to be prepared. And so I climbed many mountains、uh, in in Russia, in South America, to prepare to get to the top of Mount Everest. Mount Everest is thirty、uh, almost thirty thousand feet high, and it's like five miles, six miles up in the air. So there's very little oxygen. So you have to prepare yourself. 珠穆朗玛峰在藏语里是大地之母的意思，它是喜马拉雅山脉的主峰，海拔八千八百四十四点四三米。这座被誉为是世界屋脊的第一高峰，吸引着无数的登山家和科学家为之冒险。但欧文既不是登山家，也不是科学家。他从1991年开始策划珠峰的攀登计划，不是为了寻求刺激，也不是为了获取名利，而是源于内心一个简单执着的愿望，为了他最爱的人。Because my love for my daughter, my daughter、uh, was born、uh, normal. And after about a year, year and a half, she started to、uh, not develop normally, and I was really concerned. So I went to see the doctors, and I spent oh maybe one, two years going to specialist doctors, trying to find out why, what happened to my daughter. And so consequently, what I ended up doing is, one in '86, I was reading a newspaper article about another girl. That was in the United States, and they're describing her symptoms, and her symptoms were the same as my daughter's. So now it was called Rett syndrome, R-E-T-T syndrome. So now I knew that it was not something that I did; that it was a genetic situation. So I was really touched by that, and I was determined to try to find out a cure, you know, for Rett syndrome. And so I was looking at how. I can bring this disease to the attention of the world, and so then I thought about Mount Everest because it was the closest point to the moon, and so I decided to put a, a group of climbers together to help me raise that international awareness of Rett syndrome. So that was my first love and need for Mount Everest. So climbing Mount Everest, you're sick all the time. You are sick. You have throwing up. You have headaches because there's no oxygen. Very less. So it's very, very difficult to climb Everest. This climb of the Everest trip, besides fulfilling Owen long time dream, also brought him some surprises. He and his colleagues filmed the climb process as a documentary. This experience of a different experience will forever be held in his memory. I call the expedition the climb for hope. So every day you climb, you climb. So it's hoping to come for the future to find a cure for Rett syndrome. And so we had a, a, a camera crew that was climbing with us, and they created a movie called "The Climb for Hope," 
and that movie uh, was uh, nominated, uh, won the, uh, the Gold Award at the New York uh, Film Festival. And so that movie showed that we as, as a group were struggling for this international cause of helping Rett Syndrome and it sort of showed what is required to do that. It's not always easy, regardless of what you want to do in life, but you have to prepare and then you have to take the steps and you have to be determined and have the effort to be able to get to the top of your goal, your dream. 在攀登珠峰的过程中，欧文发现很多中国孩子并不能流利地用英语表达。欧文不禁开始思考：记忆之门的钥匙究竟被他们藏在了哪里？他看到中国的孩子们并不懒惰，甚至可以称得上是世界